Lack of hot water? Today we're going to be changing the most common part on a tank style water heater that causes shortage of hot water, which is a faulty or damaged dip tube. First things first, let's go through the function and the common signs of a faulty dip tube, so you're not wasting your time and money replacing incorrect parts. Let's get started. The dip tube is on the inside of the tank and is installed on the cold water supply. Its function is to direct the incoming cold water to the bottom of the tank to be heated. Then the hot water is drawn from the top of the tank. If the dip tube is damaged, the cold water entering the tank will mix with the hot water near the top of the tank, causing lukewarm or shortage in the hot water supply. The most common signs of a damaged dip tube is shortage in hot water, having to turn the gas control to the hottest setting, or noticing your shower's water temp start to cool as you shower, so you have to add more hot water. Note that an undersized water heater can also cause these symptoms, and should be double checked before completing this repair. Water heater manuals will have spec sheets with production and recovery figures. The very first step is turning the gas control to the pilot setting so the burner won't be firing during this repair. A more common gas control knob looks like this, but turning it to the pilot setting is the same process. Shut off the cold water supply to the water heater. Believe it or not, this water heater doesn't have a cold water shut off, so I'll have to shut off the main water supply to the residence. It is code to have a shut off on a water heater's inlet, so I'll be installing a 3 quarter inch ball valve along with the new dip tube. To ensure the water is off, open a hot faucet to relieve the pressure. Using a bucket or a hose directed to the floor drain, drain off roughly 5 to 10 gallons of water. The complete tank doesn't have to be drained, just enough to empty the water distribution piping above the tank. Disconnect the cold water supply. This tank is using a shark bite flex connector and simply loosens off. Yours may be using rigid copper tubing and requires being cut. If you don't have the tools to solder, then you can reuse the flex connector to attach the new dip tube if the gaskets are in good condition or purchase a new one. Most jurisdictions have a minimum copper or braided riser length of 18 inches and 6 inches from the Type-C venting to any combustible. This braided riser is 12 inches so the white PEX tubing is connected too close to the top of the tank and too close to the Type-C venting. I'll be replacing this whole section with 3 quarter inch copper. Depending on your model, it may be easier to access the dip tube by first removing the plastic shroud. Remove the old dip tube with a pipe wrench or adjustable pliers, spinning in a counterclockwise direction. Having someone to hold the tank may be needed as this can be a very tight connection. This particular tube isn't in that bad of condition and still holds its shape. But here's some older footage of a dip tube that was completely deteriorated. To get the correct length, line up the old dip tube with the new and cut to length. In the extreme scenario where the old dip tube has deteriorated to the point where it is no longer visible, then the new one should land roughly 3-4 to four inches above the control valve. An easy way to measure this is to flip the dip tube around, put the threaded portion 3-4 to four inches above the control valve, and cut the other end flush to the top of the tank. We can now start putting things back together. Apply potable water approved Teflon tape or sealant to the lower threads. Drop the dip tube into place and hand tighten first. Since this pipe wrench's jaws are wide enough to damage the upper threads, I'll use an adjustable wrench with thinner jaws to finish tightening. This is the point where most people's installs will differ depending on the current piping. I'll be using a dielectric union, 3 quarter inch copper, 3 quarter inch ball valve, and a female PEX adapter to finish my connections. If you are using a push fit flex connector, this step can be much easier and straightforward. They even make water heater flex connectors with shutoffs already installed. In the end, it's up to you how you want to make your final connections, but since I have all the tools and fittings, I'll be running it in rigid copper. I won't bore you with 10 minutes of cleaning copper fittings, but if you need a refresher on how to solder copper tubing, make sure to check out our how to solder video at the end of this one. Just remember to take the time to properly clean, deburr, flux, wipe, and inspect your joints. An important tip is to never solder these fittings directly connected to the tank. The heat can travel down the copper and damage the tank's fittings and dip tube.
This is the last connection, crimping the cold water supply to the copper riser. Close the cold water supply to the water heater. If you didn't have to shut off your main water supply, this valve should already be in this position and you can skip this step and the reopening of the main water supply step as well. Open the main water supply just slightly to allow the lines to fill. Once filled, open fully. We should all be at the same step by now. Start filling the tank by slightly opening the water heater's cold water supply. Our hot faucet should still be opened and this will allow the air from the tank to be purged out the faucet. Once the faucet flows without any air, the water heater's supply valve can be fully opened and the faucet can be closed. Before turning the gas control back to the on position, check for leaks at all your connections. Well guys, there you have it. Hopefully this video was informative and this video helped you out. Liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time.